All right, so let's get this guy set up. Pretty straightforward, really good quality zips. Just sort of pull down over any of your lights or anything here. All the way up, flip it up. Then you just got two Velcro straps, one there, one there. Let it flow down just like that. Now these are some of the really cool things. These little, these little ratchety straps, you'll see those work in a minute. They're one of the best things about it. Well, other than the shade bit, I guess. And then you just walk it around. Da -da 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 -da, all freestanding. So that's pretty cool. And it can handle quite a bit of wind as well. So you just ratchet it up like that. That's this one done. We've got our little tie down straps. Then we just need to bring this guy around in the same way. Let's get the little ratchety bit. Bring it around. Da -da 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 find another little spot for it to ratchet on. And then this is the this is the little ratchet in action. You pull it there so it comes tight. And that's it. Stop the clock. We are all set up. That's all you need to do. You can get these guys down to give a little bit extra stability if it's windy, but on a day, day like today, they're just not required. You do have your extra little ropes and bits and pieces. So you can fully peg it down, but other than that, we are good to go. So let's get on over to the other camera and let's run through some of the features that this guy comes with. So there you go, what do you reckon? That is pretty fast as far as setup as you can tell. And there's a bit of a side view of the amount of shade that you're getting. So it is coming out that about two and a half meters odd from the side of the car. But one of the cool things I reckon that it has compared to your traditional side mount awning is we go right from the back of the D-Max here. And if we go all the way down, you can see that it's literally front to end. Now, of course, you don't get the you don't get the full lot underneath here because you know it has to it has to angle in. But it is pretty pretty cool in the fact that in the same footprint that you have one of those standard straight out awnings, you're going to get all the way to the front and the rear. So overall, pretty good. Now, from a build quality perspective, it is top notch. Everything is alloy. Everything is stainless in here. This is the sort of the tricks to the getting this bad boy to sort of stay up in the wind and, and not move around and not break like you see in some cheaper awnings. Everything's stainless here and in there. They put a lot of thought by the looks of things into the, the actual hinge mechanism, which is pretty cool. The backing plate is massive. It's, it's like this wide. And I think that's going to give you a lot of that structural rigidity. If we sort of wobble it around, it's, it's really, really solid. And then of course on the sides, You've got three tie down points or these nice little lapels that can use sort of some extra stability if you're, if you're getting crazy winds or what have you. I've had this up before on one of the trips and it was absolutely bucketing down in rain. And I found that these were really helpful in those instances where you could really ping it down like that and it would create a bit of a, a bit of a runoff area where water would sort of automatically wanna gutter out and come down on the side. So overall, really good quality and great structure. Now you can see there are some poles that are tucked away in here. They do come attached to the awning. Some others you see out there that they're sort of a separate component. They're the standard standard twist and extend versions. And when they do come out, if we put one of these guys out, you can take them out at a bit of an angle like that as well. Now the reason why you wanna do that is because of the walls. So you'll see around the top here, if you're not a fan of Velcro, this is not the one for you because there is a lot of it. Now the upside of that, is you can totally close all of this in. Now I've got one of the walls and I'll show you what that looks like here now. And it really does sort of close it into sort of more of a room, which is pretty cool. Excellent if you've got some swags and that sort of jazz. When I went uh, camping and all that rain, I just had my swag down this side and it left quite a bit of space for me to still stay nice and dry undercover. A couple other things to mention is everything is gusseted. So you can see in here, everything's reinforced. Everything is seam sealed and double stitched there as well, as you can see, which is which is great to see. All of your points or your sort of your, your heavy stress points, one of you are all gusseted, which is great. And also seam sealed as well. So I can confirm this guy's been in some pretty hectic weather. It is waterproof, which is great. It also has a 600D canvas on the top. It is a ripstop, as you can see there, and it does have a PU coating that, that runs through it as well. That does two things. It gives it a 50 plus UV rating, but then also with that coating on here, it does a lot to help reduce the heat that comes off the top of the roof when you are in a blazing sun. 
Now that about wraps up the summary, so let's move on to some quick fire pros and cons. A definite pro number one is just how fast the thing is to set up. It is super fast. Second pro is the ratchet straps. I absolutely love these. They are so easy to use. You've got the little press here that you use just to loosen the thing off. And as you saw there before when we were setting up, super easy to tension everything into place. And pro number three for me is definitely the fact that the poles are integrated. Some other awnings out there, these are separate. I love the fact that you've got some proper hinges that go out, so perfect when you have your walls for some a bit of extra space underneath. Now, there's not a lot to report from a cons perspective. I would definitely like to see some better quality brackets. The brackets themselves are super strong and sturdy, but the coating that they have on them just isn't that great. And, and after a couple of trips, I have to do three before I do one of these videos, I already started seeing some surface rust on there. So for a premium awning, you know, I would have thought that there'd be a better coating on the brackets themselves. A bit of touch-up paint, you know, no problem at all, but for the for the price you know i would have thought that um you know maybe there's some some better coating on the brackets it's a bit difficult to find any other cons because this is such a good quality unit i have absolutely kiboshed my noggin on these guys here before so it's more of a, a user error rather than a design flaw because uh, well that's just me but there's something to be me be mindful of they do serve a purpose though and i'd rather have them than not have them but other than that overall it's just a great quality unit now before we head over to some final thoughts let's switch cameras here again let's start the clock let's jump over to first person mode and get this guy all packed up all right so to get the thing all packed up first thing let's start with the poles so you just push in and twist i just clip in a place like that number two just slide him in give him a bit of a twist so it stays in place number two there then we can just follow around now depending on your setup where you're going to have this but these are the clips this is what's so awesome about it you basically just need to push in and it releases just like that so pretty awesome i love those little things i don't know what it is about them but I normally just hook that onto there sort of come halfway and then we do the same on our awning on this side so we just pull our little tab there on the side there again hook him on walk him around now i put this one in first so just keep that at sort of that 90 degree or 45 degree push him all the way in and then you just need to slide this guy in as well keep him in there nice and tight it'll go in there no problem at all tuck all your material down a little bit like that and then what i normally do is just throw all the all the ropes in here before you do the old roly-poly so chuck it in there pull down a little bit as you roll up and it should come in nice and tight like that grab your strap one at the top there as well you might have to pull it out like i did and then this guy goes over the top and straps down a little bit like that flip your cover over should come over quite nicely just like that now depending on your preference i prefer to have my zips down the other end in case they have a bit of a jingo jango as you're driving down your favorite track push up as you go and then down just like that so stop the clock as you can see it's it's well within a minute both sides there or i'm thinking about that minute mark anyway but pretty good stuff from here let's jump back over to the other camera and cover off some final thoughts well there you go guys that is the trip ready review of the bushwhacker adventure gear 180 degree extreme darkness awning what do you think let me know in the comments down below is this something that you would consider over a 270 or is is the 270 of the go or you prefer the ones out what, what do you think let me know in the comments down below as always i hope you found this review helpful and a quick reminder that you can find a link to where you can pick one of these up for yourself in the description of the video down below big thanks to the patrons of video show me how as always guys your extra support i truly appreciate be sure to check out the channel for more trip ready reviews on all things four wheel drive camping and adventure gear but other than that guys as always i hope that you have an amazing day and i will see you in the next video cheers guys